Jimmy. There's always something new to learn in Hair and Road Kitchen. We learn by playing with our food. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Jimmy and I are taking the week up. See ya. We've actually stolen their jobs underneath them. We've ripped the carpet out from under their feet, and now we are replacing them right now. So today we are going to be cooking, and I guess we'll change it to Pro Star Kitchen instead. So I guess if you guys are ready, we'll start. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, man, it was fantastic. Thank you guys. Well, but really, you two are going to be the stars of the show. Yeah, so. we will be the stars of the show. Oh, so today, two very talented Pro Star Pro Start students, Sharon Kinch and Aiden Roberts, most of the town, are joining us today <laughs> to share with us their bean cooking recipe. A few weeks ago, Pro Start Colorado, almost a month ago, oh, almost a month ago, okay, uh, Pro Start of Colorado uh, sent out um, an invitation to their over 1,000 Pro Start students and said, hey, show us what you can do with beans and they had a cooking with beans contest and the two winners are here with us today to show us their recipes how exciting the great thing about this is we have one that is a savory and cooking on stove top and even with a pressure cooker and then we have one that is sweet and cooking things in a bake and and and, oh, sure. and there's another one and so we're it's like a a shortbread and not a shortbread but it is totally escaping my mind right now what it is but um anyway we have two great recipes that we're going to uh we're going to uh, learn today all right so these two are going to be playing with their food now before we begin just a quick introduction here is sharon kinch is from estes park high school and aiden roberts here is from the odyssey career development in Colorado Springs, Colorado. I'd ask you guys to cheer, but you're at home and probably on your couch. But oh, we can cheer. <laughs> Very good. So, oh wait, we didn't cheer for sure. Yeah. Oh, we cheer. Yeah. Oh, God. Very good. I really hope somebody's mom comes in and tells them to stop, like right immediately. <laughs> All right. Very good. So with that. Let's go ahead and get get started. And I believe Sharon, you're up first. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So while the students are cooking, we will talk to them individually, make fun of them a little bit. <laughs> We're going to go through the recipe, and we'll, let's let's have a conversation about you and your career and what yeah. you want to do. So. I'll leave you alone. Then, yeah, so you can do that. Get out of here. So I'm going to be making black bean brownies. Oh, you need this. We put everything on the opposite side of the table here. Here's all your meat and There you go. Here we go. All right. Okay, so first you're going to take all of your main ingredients and you're going to combine them into a mixer and mix it all at once. So first I have two cups of black beans. And what we did with these is we soaked them over two nights so they're extra soft when we go to mix them. They're not too hard and chunky. So the overnight soak. Oh, the overnight soak. Okay, very good. And we talked about that like a month ago about like overnight versus just boiling, like, or like a directly. quick soak or something yeah. like that. Or the instant pot. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, and then we have three eggs that we're going to put in with those. Okay. Three full eggs. So we're going to chop up the beans with the eggs, right? We don't have to pre-chop the beans or anything like that. Yeah, you're going to put everything okay. together at once. Everything together at once. All right, very good. And then so, you have three tablespoons of vegetable oil. Mm -hmm. I think we could take a lesson from them and have everything prepped out. You know, this is <laughs> this is beautiful. I think having yeah. you know, we we always stress to our students in our basic skills class uh, to have your, your mise en place, everything in its place, ready to go. And uh, sometimes Jimmy and I even struggle with that. So. But uh, yeah, we should have to take a lesson. This looks <laughs> nice. Very, very nice. Well done. We one fourth of a cup of cocoa powder. And you need three fourths of a cup of white graduated sugar. And then I also have a pinch of salt in here too. Okay. Okay. All right. You always have to have that balance, right? You have to have a little bit of sweet. Well, mostly sweet. And all sweet should have just a touch of salt though. Especially with, so, especially with chocolate. Yes, salt and chocolate. Is, oh, it's so delicious. It really kind of brings those flavors out together. Absolutely. And kind of yeah. Right, it a little bit. Right? It does, yeah. And then the last ingredient is one teaspoon of 
Vanilla extract. Vanilla extract. Okay, very good. So now we're going to mix all those in a, a Roboku or a food processor. Yeah. All right. And what kind of consistency are we looking for there? Um, as smooth as you can get it. As smooth as you can like get it. Not like the brown to have a smooth consistency. Okay. Very good, very good. So what I was trying to say earlier was that uh, what Sharon is making here is a quick bread recipe, all right? Uh, something that has a chemical leavening agent in it, all right? Uh, which I think, I assume we have over here later on, or that she will add later on. Where you also take your wet ingredients and then you add your dry ingredients. Right, so we have different, different... You don't have to knead it, you don't have to work any glutens in. That's right, it's very close to, like, to the muffin method, right? Where if, if you have your wet, you have your dry, you combine the two, very quick mix, right? Um, and the uh, bench tolerance on it is very short. Okay, so we want to get those into our molds, into our pan, and into the oven as quickly as possible. Hence the word, or hence the name, quick breads. That's where yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, we need people cleaning up after us. Ah, we do need. Yeah, no kidding. We're acting as stewards today. How fan hit? How fantastic is that? All right. So nice, smooth, a little chunky, but. We have uh all right oh yeah it already looks like a brownie mixture it does look like a brownie. It smells mixture. really good too does it i yeah. can smell it from oh. over here it's um, <laughs> not because i'm no <laughs> okay and then what you're going to do is you'll take your pans that you have set aside for the baking process i'm using pins just because they're a bit easier than making one cheap brownie but you can do whatever works easier for you. And then you're just gonna spray it with some cooking spray. You can also use butter if that's easier for you. Or shortening. Old school, do some shortening. Some shortening. Or... Now you say muffin tin. These don't look very tin. They don't look tinny. Look... <laughs> no. The silicone, right? Yeah, so, yeah we, we love silicone mats. And, uh, we do like silicone molds. Silicone molds are fantastic. <laughs> And then when filling, if you're going to do muffin tins, you're going to fill it up about three-fourths of the whole full, just so it has space to rise. So, Sharon, I mentioned that using a living agent a week. So we've got the eggs in there as the leavening agents, is that? Yes. Yes, okay. So and then we don't have on. flour okay. because the beans act as the starch. Oh, beans act as the starch, okay, okay. Yeah. okay. So right. putting it in the mixer and working that egg kind of helps the egg kind of, you know, as if you were beating it and getting some air in there. Yeah. And then that air in this mixture, if you look closely, you can see it's a little foamy. Yeah. And then that's, so it's a mechanical leavening, Jason. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because we're you know we used a and like when you do meringues, yeah, we used a mechanical device to get the to incorporate. Uh, oh, you're making little tiny brownie, brownie bites too. I like that. Yeah, I think I end up eating more brownies when they're in small pieces. In small pieces, like, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mouth, like candy. Yep. Try to avoid the candy too, though. Definitely trying to avoid that. <laughs> yeah, we had. Yeah, we had. And so we'll get these in the oven, and then. Um, what kind of, you're doing an icing too that goes on top? Yeah, it's pretty much just a simple buttercream. Oh, nice. Mm. I love buttercream. Buttercreams are great. Yeah. They're really, really good. In fact, we had bunt cakes this morning. Oh, we did. Nothing, we had nothing bunt cakes. We had nothing bunt cakes. And, uh, we had, I, I think they do like a cream cheese frosting or something on top. I don't know, but. Yeah, I don't know. They were delicious. Though. It's delicious. I love them. They're great. Um. Celebrating our co-worker and his achievements. Colleague Jackson Lamb and celebrating his Lifetime Achievement Award through, is that the Colorado Restaurant Association? Yep. Yep. So congratulations, Jackson, on that. Bravo. Okay, and then the small ones will take shorter time to bake, so you put those in after the bigger ones. So I'm going to go ahead and put the bigger ones in the oven. All right, and we've preheated the oven to 350. 
We have our oven thermometer in there. There it goes. Ready? Okay, we'll set that aside over here. And while that's baking, you can get started on the buttercream. So here I just have some butter, which is at room temperature. It's been out of the fridge for a couple of hours. Which is always important. I worked in a bakery and before I learned how to bake, I was I was the hot side cook and everything. And I always saw all their butter. I was like, it's a lot of butter and it's all just sitting out. And then I learned a little bit more and now it all makes sense. We need a little bit of vanilla extract. Yeah, butter is definitely one of those things you can leave out for a little bit, just need it to overnight. And then you have powdered sugar to put in there. And I like to put it in slowly so I can slowly mix it in. And then you'll have the milk, which the milk you can add as you please. It just helps it become a little bit more smoother. Okay. Yeah, you definitely do not want to add all that powdered sugar at once. So we'll get a bunch of lumps. We won't, we won't get that butter nice and creamy and whatnot. Um, yeah, and then it gets in the air when you do it all at once. It does. It goes all over the place. You put it all in and then you turn the mixer on. If you're using a mixer, it just... Yeah, it goes all over the place. It's, just... it's like eating a beignet donut. You have to breathe out when you go to bite it. <laughs> breathe out when you bite it. Do not beignet. breathe in when you eat a beignet. Yeah, then you breathe in, you go off all over the place, and you just cough, and it just gets worse, right? It's just bad. All right, so the room temperature butter, we're just kind of mixing that up and all the working that sugar into it. Yeah. 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 Are we done here? Um, no. Oh, no, not yet. You got some more milk going there. Here we go. Yeah. Got a small spatula here for you. Thank you. There you go. Kind of get that out of this. Sometimes you get that butter stuck in that whisk. Boy, I tell you what, be a little challenging there. And so, all right. So while you're mixing that up, you know you're in ProStart. Yes. What is it you like most about ProStart? My teacher. Your teacher. Oh, uh, that's what <laughs> you're over there. <laughs> over there. <laughs> no, she seems amazing though. From the short time that I've uh, interacted with Carrie over there. Um, it's that that's amazing, you know, and that's it's great to hear, it's great for teachers to hear. We love our students. She gives us a lot of learning opportunity. She's mm -hmm. also in that she told me about the bean competition, which is really nice. So. Yeah. So what is about what 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 else do you want to get out of Pro Start going through this? Do you want to? Is that something you want to do for a career, maybe, or? Uh, yeah, I've always wanted to have my own business. Okay. What what kind of business? I baking, so I assume baking. Is yeah. It, yeah. Okay. Baking and like chocolate tear work. Okay. Ooh. Oh, very good. Very yeah. Good. While we were setting up, I heard you talking a little bit about all your chocolate work. Yeah. Oh. So is chocolate really your passion? Yeah. And so you just had to figure out how to work beans into chocolate. Yeah. And uh, is that how we came up with the recipe? Yeah. <laughs> I like yeah. it. I like it. You stick with your passion and then make things work with it. That's it. It's a good it's way to go. Yeah. So have you, done, have you ever done any kind of like chocolate sculpture work or anything? Or now you haven't gotten into that yet? Uh, not any like chocolate sculptures, but I do like making chocolate bonbons. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Are you doing like molded chocolates or? Yeah, like they're like chocolate? molded chocolates. Okay, cool. That is one of my favorite things to do is molded chocolates. Yeah, I like watching like, you know, you see a lot of videos out there and you know they'll put chocolates in bones and flip them over and then they do like multiple layers or yep. they use cool marble stuff definitely a lot of options to do yeah uh, you can do really cool things with the molds too where you take like a <laughs> uh, metal looking chocolate paint yeah and then like kind of smear it in the molds yeah um and it, it has like a glisten to it yeah and then you do the chocolate in it and then it has a really cool um texture on it right? yeah and color yep so this is, Sharon, I admire you right now for what you're doing because it's, it takes, she, she has a lot of I know, you just made buttercream by hand. She's making <laughs> buttercream by hand. I don't think I've and done that. No, I, have, I don't think I have either, you know, and it's like, I always try to tell our students that and other people that too. Cooking a lot of times takes patience. You just have to wait, just, you know, you just have to go with it and, um, you know, it's just, just take some time to get the thing done and so slowly. Karen, good on you there for uh, hey. doing buttercream yeah. by hand. Why don't we uh, show the camera the uh, buttercream there? Look at that beautiful buttercream by hand. Nice. Okay. Excellent. Very good. All right. Cool. I like when the brownies come out. Yep. Okay. And uh, do we want to get the small ones in? 
backstory of how you came to this recipe though yeah well i mean i kind of we kind of talked about it but yeah um so it's the chocolate i don't like beans actually oh really i hate beans <laughs> all, all kinds of beans all or... beans oh, really? pretty much uh so when my teacher told me i had to make something with beans i asked if i could use cocoa beans uh, she said no okay. uh i like how you tried to work around cocoa beans though. they're not I don't think they're legumes. They're not a, no. No, a legume, they're not. right? No. Okay. no. So, um, <laughs> it's like, no, they are definitely not. No. No, my teacher's cool being on that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then I remember to try the net and I talked about doing black beans oh. in desserts and cakes and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. I figured it'd be the same process for brownies. So okay. I came up with how to do it. And, mm-hmm. awesome. You know, one thing I like about, uh, you know, pro starts and then you know, as you as you go through your your years of education, right? There's different experiences, things that you you're exposed to, right? So yeah. you don't like beans, but you kind of it, it gets you out of your comfort zone and exposes you to something maybe that you don't like, but turn it into something maybe that you do like. Mm-hmm. That's one thing I really like about education is yeah. that you know it, it gets you out of com- out of a comfort zone and exposes you to something different uh, and broadens your mind, and gets you open minded. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and if you go to start your own business, now you know you can make a flourless bean brownie as a base for something, as a base for a chocolate sculpture or something. Mm-hmm. Like, you know? so, yeah, because and a lot of times it's not necessarily about you, right? It's about your clientele. Mm-hmm. If your clientele wants that, that's what you got to do for your clientele, right? Yep. <laughs> Good job on coming up to with that uh, black bean brownie recipe. Can't wait Thank to you. taste it. All right. Awesome. Well, I think uh, we'll... While your uh, brownies are getting cooked and ready to go, feel free to come back and check in on them. Okay. Uh, but I think we're going to bring Aiden over here to uh, show us his recipe. So, okay. Thanks yeah, for sharing. Sure. We'll bring you back on once uh, everything's you. ready to go. Thank you very much, Sherry. <clears throat> come on in. Come on down. That was so awesome. I loved all of that. It was like a really interesting recipe idea and Jennifer from walking up there. I genuinely enjoy everything about that. Such an interesting story, to be honest. I, on the other hand, love beans, actually. But it's not. Oh, got it. <laughs> Just that awesome. I love oh, everything that you have here, though. Oh, thank and, you. And they they already smells. Aiden, the vinegar. I love vinegar. Aiden brought the kitchen today. He brought the entire kitchen. He brought everything but the kitchen sink. Mm-hmm. So that's how I cook all the time. It's a problem. I need to work on that. Yeah, that's kind of the way I, I cook sometimes too. And Aiden, what have you got for us here? We have, you have so many ingredients. And I mean, it smells great. Uh, you have some beans cooking back over here. We have some crackers on a on a uh, wood board here. It's ginormous. What 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 have we got going on here? That well, is a big cutting board for crackers. The I, I'm assuming feel, we'll get there. We need to feel special. It makes the food better. We know this, okay? So, what I'm making is Texas caviar. Mm. This actually was a suggestion from one of my coworkers. Because I, <laughs> I knew I wanted to make something with black eyed peas. They are one of my favorite beans. I do love black eyed peas. <laughs> because they have a really interesting but pretty normal flavor. But really, it's the history of them that I love. Anyway, I should probably get started before I like run out of time. So, what am I going to start with? Let's see. Let's go with prepping the actual herbs that we're going to need so that I don't have to do that right after cooking. Yeah, you have everything else in some class, just the herbs, right? Yeah. Right. Well, I really just have to chop it up real quick. But other than that, it should be fine. While while you're picking leaves, why don't you tell us about this recipe? All right. So this recipe... I I saw the title when uh, when Paula sent it over. I saw Texas Caviar. I had never heard of it. Have you heard of it? We had black-eyed peas. That we had that 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 we used, um, and you know, black eyed peas. I think are really big in the South. Of course, I don't know when you were in Louisiana. Did oh, yeah. you ever have the New Year's oh. Day yeah. uh, black eyed peas collards? Black-eyed and, peas. And, yeah. I actually yeah. have to say, right. So I'm from and North that, Carolina. Oh, are you? Yeah. Okay. That's actually where I why I love black eyed peas. They are okay. my father's favorite bean. He's my personally my favorite cook. All right. 
mainly because he's just absurdly good for only taking in a home ec class in high school, and now he can make anything out of the pantry. But that is correct. They usually use collars to represent dollar bills. Well, that's one of the ideas. And black eyed peas to represent coins. And it's supposed to bring luck in the new year. And honestly, I just like the way they tasted, so I used them all the time. But I was actually deciding whether I was going to make soups and stuff or anything else. But I, I didn't know. So I actually ended up talking with one of my co-workers. His name was Arthur, or they call him Arturo. But um, either way, he's from Texas. So I asked him if he had any ideas, and he gave me this absurdly simple recipe, first of all, for Texas caviar. Uh, and it was literally garlic, a little bit of onions, and the beans, and that was it. Nothing else on it. I tried it. It was edible, and it was all right, but I wanted to add some stuff to it, and I did. Like some of my favorite things in general. Nice. I'm very good. All right. Yeah. But yeah, the beans have a great history, and I really love them a lot. Yeah. I don't know why I just added that. Well, they're so versatile. They I are. Mean, they make all kinds. I mean, look, we have brownies they, that they, we made out of them. They take on whatever flavor you put in them. Um, oh, oh, yeah. Definitely. I actually was planning on turning it into a flour. However, I believe that that would have made it more of a flour based dish than it would have been an actual bean dish. So I didn't go with that. I instead just went with using them whole as their own kind of thing. I promise I will use the rest of this thing, not waste it. Anyway. <laughs> oh, that's the next competition coming up. A little sneak peek into that. Yeah. We're going to do, we're do a garbage. zero waste competition. You got to steal garbage out of a Walmart and cook with it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all these bagels. And then you just make like a bread pudding or something. Either way. Hey, I used to make a bread pudding out of leftover rolls and pastries from uh, banquets. I used to work in a, mm. a country club. So I'd save, save all the dinner rolls, put them in the freezer, save all the leftover pastries, like cheese fill, chocolate fill, apple fill, throw them all in a hotel pan and put a custard over and bake that up. That's awesome. It was amazing. Now, second step, we'll, we're trying to get everything ready that we can get ready. No one explains. this. Oh, you're right. You mean, you would, would, it's you know, up to you if you want to use gloves. It doesn't matter. We're not serving the public. Yeah. I mean, well, you just don't, you know, don't touch your eyes or anything like yeah. that. Yeah, well, that's what, because they're going to be cooked, and I won't be touching them without gloves and after that. Yeah. Where did I put my tongs? Oh, right here. There you go. Oh, thank Sorry you. They're behind this beautiful cutting board, which I don't know where you can buy it, but you should. Because I'm sure it's on, it's on, it's on somewhere. Probably. <laughs> no, that's it. We're going to just rope these. We're going to move this right here, because that's great. I don't know if this will be a fine shot. Which one is this one? Um, I believe it's your left. That one, yep. Perfect. Right, this is my preferred way of roasting because right. it's just real quick when you're only doing one pepper. Yep. You, you know, just... uh, a good trick here for this too, Aiden, is you can do both of these at the same time. You can take a little wire rack. Use a previously roasted one. Previously roasted Don't use the brand new one. Just there. And then just put both pieces of jalapeno on there. There you go. Look at this man. See, we play with our kids. There you go. And our utensils. I know. And our equipment. That's it. Now we just need to keep an eye on it, right? So, yeah. all right. So while we're rolling, or here, listen. You can hear it popping. You can hear the popping. Yeah, yeah. All right. You so have what? to cook with all of your senses. Yeah. Exactly. So while we're uh, waiting for a jalapeno to roast, there. What else we got? We have I'm some lemons. We're cutting these lemons. You can use limes too. I prefer lime, but I brought lemons. Very good. I do. They give these. <laughs> I'm making it sound like I did that. But that's but, right. So eight citrus. Yes. A but citrus. really, you can use any citrus. Well, like, because it might even have. be good with orange. Oh, yeah. Orange I wouldn't really even know. I should have tried that. But, because that's been really good. Now you've got me thinking about all these delicious mm -hmm. ideas. Mm -hmm. telling you now. Well, it's stuff like you cooking. can use later on, you know? So that's how we develop recipes. We cook it once. Mm -hmm. We try something else. Well, we cook it again. We, we don't have an ingredient, so we use something yeah. else. Maybe we like that better. And that's how everything evolves. Well, that's how we also develop flavor profiles too, right? Yeah. So you, yeah, you, you might use a lemon, you use a lime, you use an orange for you right. figure out which one you do and don't like. So right now, I'm gonna get real close. I have shallots, I have onions, and I have this garlic. And I'm going to actually saute them because when making this recipe, I tried it multiple different ways, like you actually explained earlier. Yeah. Um, to develop it a little more into what I like to make. And what I did was Hey, I'm gonna check on your jalapeno next. Thank you. Ready to go later on those guys. 
Alright, perfect. Yeah, these ranges are pretty nice. Like, you can just put them right there. Right there. There we go. Thank you. Alright, and now I will start heating this pan up. Up again. Right. Always heat your pan first. We say that all the time. That's it. And then you put the oil. It makes it more nonstick, right? Mm hmm. I'm asking the professionals who know more. <laughs> yeah. More nonstick, and, and then you run less chance of smoking your oil and. Yeah, your oil doesn't break down as it, heat, as it is heating up. So. All right, so the reason we are going to cook these is because I did try this recipe a bunch of different ways. And whenever everything's uncooked, which is usually how it's served, it's, it's fine, but it kind of is just a punch in the face with all these flavors. You don't really experience it. It's not fun. It's just kind of like, well, it's there. And so you're going to you, taming down the flavor of well, it, right? I thought that would be the case. But what ended up happening instead was that each flavor kind of came out in a train. You know, imagine it like a bunch of tiny children with very different faces on one of those little, like, trains they have in the mini mall. And, you know, you just see each one of them individually and have time to study them as they pass <laughs> by. Like, look at that one, he's picking his nose. That's disgusting. Look at that one, he's smacking the other person. That's also terrible. But in a flavorful way. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Thank you. Now, when that is heated... It'll be pretty quick. These, yeah. These ranges are hot. These ranges do get hot. I know, I'm used yeah. to using an electric stove at home, but, you know, I like the ability to use oil for you, Aiden, if you need that. I wasn't sure if you needed that or not. I was about to ask this, <laughs> but I also didn't want to, because you've been so helpful this whole time. Yeah, that's what we're here to do, you know? All right. Let me just put a little bit. Oh, that's way too much. But okay. it'll work, because right. it's coming out of the pan anyway. Now, right, so hot pan, in, oil, teaspoon, teaspoon, perfect. So, we have to measure all this out a little bit. So, what we end up, and you can put them in, in succession, it doesn't really matter. Right now, we're going to put two teaspoons of this shot. They can be rough teaspoons, you don't have to level it out. It actually adds a little more complexity with it that way. And then, we want these four tablespoons of onion, if I can get this thing off. I love shallots. I love the smell of shallots as they're cooking. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's definitely my favorite in the onion family. I agree. Let me grab that. Can I have that? Thank you. And then we cook garlic with bacon. That garlic and bacon? bacon? Yeah. And you want to stop That's amazing. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So I'm taking, now, do we want any color at all on our uh -huh. on our onions here? Or we... Yes. And that will, it'll be more of a translucent color, and then you just want a pinch of garlic. Whatever size, doesn't matter. Whatever you want. Taste it. Whatever you works for you. Mm -hmm. yep. That's one of the things I actually like about cooking oil, is that although a lot of flavors are universal, you'll see that a lot of people throughout history have changed what they like. Did you know about this um, stew that was um, served in every English and foreign nation for like a 300 years, and the guy who made it got a man. Just if he made that stew any time it was coordinated. And that's all we had to do. Huh. And then it was delicious, but you know, it started to fall out of favor in England at the time because flavors have got more complex and a lot better. And so, you know, they just didn't ask for it or they wouldn't eat it. It would still be good, but they wouldn't eat it. Anyway. Huh. What what's the name of the stew? I believe it is Barley something. Huh. It's not barley, but I'm gonna have to look it up again. I remember okay. the story, not the name. Very good. All right, so we have a little bit of color there, right? So what what are we going to add next? Now, this recipe often calls for vinegar just thrown on top. However, mm -hmm. I like putting it in with the vegetables. I uh, kind of reducing <laughs> the vinegar a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to give it more color and yeah. more flavor. Okay. And what's that kind of, so then you don't have to pour it over top and overpower the lime juice, which once again makes that shrine of flavor. Gotcha. We're going to get underneath you here for a second, one second here. We're going to check on. I want to do it here. Yeah. yeah. It's here. We're such an efficient kitchen. Have you guys realized that? Okay, very good. Check those. Thank you very much. All right. So we've got that vinegar reducing there. And now, <laughs> literally everything else. Is prepping for this. This is the only cooking you will really have to do. Okay. Get it stuff blended, so with the garnishes, or just mush together in the refrigerator. 
Yes, it is right. supposed to be a served cold call. Now, could you, could you serve this um, as a side dish to something like a... 100%. Okay. Because, although I tried to use it to replace caviar on a lot of dishes, you, it is meant as a salad. Gotcha. So, okay. you can use it as such. All right, very good. we'll be moving these. Sorry, I feel like I've been ranting this whole time. Oh, you're, you're, you you're fine. Anything? I'm going to uh, move some of this stuff up to the side here for you. There we go. Well, I guess this is the only thing you have to do, except for roasting the jalapenos as well. There are a lot of things. Now, where did I put this big old bowl? So, Aiden, where, uh, so, so we got your inspiration there on on doing the recipe there. Um, why are you in ProStar? What's your, what's you, do you have an end goal? What's your... So my school is a combined high school, middle school. Okay. I joined when I was in seventh grade. Okay. And every day the ProStar program was going on, I would stand and watch them. I, it was a high school program, so I couldn't be in it. Yeah. So, and that was from seventh grade through my entire two years uh, in middle school and high school. And once I went to high school, I was like, I'm going to take this class. Um, I was still obsessed with it, but I didn't take it. I took Spanish because my parents told me that that was a better option. I did that. You know, hola, como esta, yeah, and whatnot. But that's great that to learn another one. It is. It's really nice. But, yeah. you know, it, it helped when I worked in the kitchen, actually. Sure. Mm -hmm. But... I finally took the chance now that I could drive myself places to actually take the class. Okay. And Miss Aragon let me shadow it when I was in the seventh grade. That's my pro star teacher. She's been the kindest and best for so long. And honestly, the reason I took it was just because I love cooking. My father is a really good cook, and I wanted to be able to cook. Okay. I don't know. Food was the one thing that I enjoyed from everywhere that I've lived. Yeah, I mean, so many of our memories are tied to food. Um, oh, yes. Like, mm -hmm. I remember uh, my late uncle, one of the first recipes I ever learned was Frito Chili Pie. And uh, mm -hmm. that was, I, I will, I haven't made it in a while. I probably should. Yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> I mean, essentially, I was making chili. Yeah. And then building it. But, you know, I have fond memories of my uncle because of that. That's yeah. beautiful. That's very good. Um... <clears throat> And so you're a senior this year, is that correct? Yes, I am. Okay, so what do you plan to do after high school? And do you, well, do you plan to take on cooking as a potential career or I do. in hospitality? And I want, such as a lot of the things I've done today, I'm kind of an all over the place person. Uh, I love everything and everything life has to offer. That's actually probably the reason I enjoyed food is one of my first ideas for what I would do. Because yeah. it's such... A universal thing and also one of the most amazing things that you can do because it comes from the earth and also from life itself like fish animals such as cows mm -hmm. and whatnot but i want to do movies and films and the like but i think until that works out or even if it doesn't i'm going to do something else i also love which is be a cook okay but i want to do that on a cargo ship because I want to be able to go around the world, not have to deal with a thousand people all the time, but also be able to experience all these different cuisines. Because I really miss cooking in Korea, which is really awesome. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, you cooked in Korea? Yeah, you cooked. Uh, I lived in Korea for three years. Oh, wow. Nice. Yes, my father's military. Ah, so oh, we were okay. Okay. That's actually the only reason I know how to make really good fried rice. Oh, and yeah. bulgogi okay. and all these other things. Uh, bulgogi, that's uh, Where should I put this? We do yeah. bul bulgogi in our taste of world class. And, uh, yeah, it is delicious. Korea is just a nice place. I love oh, it. Yeah. So is great. I miss it a lot. So that's how I used to reconnect with being there. Okay. All right. Now, once everything is cooked and diced up, which you want them all diced, you can toss them all into the bowl once you have them measured out. Now, what you're going to want to do is also add these bell peppers, which I have. Uh, any colors you want, preferably at least have green in there and maybe red. But I also added orange because it has like a really weird juxtaposition between the purple, orange, and green, which sort of gives you a 
I like the color. Yeah. You gotta have a yeah. green goblin vibe, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. You could oh, the orange and the green? I guess, I guess. But then you got the purple in there, too. Oh, yeah. And so, yeah. All right. All right. So, one place I worked at, we called it confetti and peppers. Uh, and we had to do a, a really yeah. fine brunoise on these peppers. Yeah, and they had to be like perfect uh, squares. Too, yeah. You know? Yeah. That's about And eight. then you literally just kind of splashed it on there. It was no flavor, it was literally just color. Yeah. But just a pinch of that. it made it look really good. That's awesome. <laughs> it does look good, yeah. All right. And then you can add some like lemon and stuff, seeds, whatever. Uh, right. But you want the acid. And then with the corn. Now here's the thing with how you dice these. You can choose to make everything a lot smaller than the beans or corn, but they're not gonna be chopped up. So if you're going to make it caviar style, you, you kinda wanna balance what you can plate, even though these things are giant compared to what you cut. Hmm. So I tried the method of actually just making them as small as possible, so that even if I only got like two kernels when I placed this in one bean, I would have like five or six different like vegetables or pieces of anything in that. I'm using a tablespoon of your corn there. Yeah, like quite a bit. I'm I'm doing this till I have like cups because um, really the beans and um just the mass of what you are creating today. Yeah. The other, the other vegetables are more just like the garnish, right? Yeah, like, they yeah. definitely add that flavor, but yeah. yeah. Okay. You guys are all saying the right things, and I'm just adding random tidbits to it. All right, all right. So, uh, Mr. Webb, we've got your uh, beans over there draining for you. Is that your last name? That's my last name. That is my aunt's last name. He's not spread. Where's she from? She's from North Carolina. Mm. So, where, where in North Carolina are you from? I was born in a town called Hickory. Yeah, I know Hickory. Really? <laughs> yeah. I like how that southern draw comes out. I know Hickory. Ah, sorry, I didn't, yeah, I didn't mean to do that. I was that. just <laughs> insinuating that I could sweep up the name I just dropped, but now you knew it. No, so I it's perfect. I know Hickory. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, that's where I was going before my dad grew up. But my okay. mom is from, like, Greensboro. Yeah, no Greensboro. The uh, corporate headquarters for the fresh market. Is in Greensboro. Oh, where I was a, I didn't. I was a test chef for one of their cookbooks years ago. Anyway, um, yeah, I love the southern southern cuisines, and um, but then I also know where Hickory is. Remember that comedian John Leap? Oh, no, isn't that the really small guy who is from Hickory? And he's yeah, he, he's like, Hickory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he's, he's the one who always did the. Dodge, this, this thing got a hemi. Anyway, um, all right, so we're, ch we're checking our brownies over here. All right, and then other than that, this should be everything in that bowl. You okay. can put a little bit of these herbs in there as garnish. But now I like I like a lot of cilantro. I think this this all yeah, these just, flavors and all these just for you, just throw a little more in. There. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I, I think it really lends to having big, not a big punch, but you know. Fair amount of cilantro in it there. So. Yeah, I love cilantro. I do too. I love cilantro. I love parsley. Yep. I just love food. I, you I know, love we food. I we always talk about like, oh, I love that. I really do just love all food. I just love all food. You know, <laughs> it's so great. I get, I get why some people can be picky with some flavors, but everything's just so good. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. delicious. Okay, so we have our Confederate or our, excuse me, our Confederate. <laughs> Our caviar, our Texas, this caviar yeah. Texas caviar here. Um, do we need some spoons there to mix it up? Or we you will get... need a spoon. Right. Uh, let's grab a... Here you go. Yeah, that or a Maybe. spatula back there. Hold gonna... up. Gonna get real close to the camera. No, back up just a little bit here. Okay. Is that there good? You go. Now? There you go. Ah, thank you. So you just mix it up, do a couple of like tosses, turns. And you can see... Once you mix it up, it doesn't look so bland. It's got this really interesting color that I really It does. Enjoy. It has just all kinds of pops with, pops with all kinds of colors there. And that is the Texas caviar itself. Okay. Now there's some other things. Now, okay, there to check that. Good. I was going to ask. Now we are going to make the avocado creme, which is the garnish, which is very simple. You just take an avocado, 
Those are tiny little avocados. Hey, are tiny. Tiny. All the big ones were right. So I went with uh, these. Uh, that's always the challenge. Yeah. And normally it's just one. Now, have you had the green skin avocado from uh, Louisiana? Green skin? Or just from the south? No. It's a different varietal of avocado. Really? And I've never heard it's got green little, skin avocado. Yeah, it's got a little, okay. Keep going. And so it's green. Yeah, it's yeah like I mean, I've seen the green avocados, but I mean, no, I it's, didn't it's, know a, they were from it's a totally different varietal, and it's got it's a little more water content. Okay. Um, it's not as creamy, but they're yeah. delicious. Um, that's okay. We'll just cut that one out with a spoon or something like that. Uh, I don't know. Word. You know what else works really good? The end of a uh, tongue. Oh, ready? Oh. And then go down the other side. There we go. Oh, look at that. So much knowledge. I'm so glad I won. What's one of our goals in the kitchen? To teach little hacks. <laughs> kitchen hacks. Kitchen hacks. And that's it right there, ladies and gentlemen. That is your kitchen hack for the day. Oh, not really. And We're moving avocados with us. And a tiny spoon. Perfect. You're good. Thank you. There we go. We're going to scoop it into scoop the whole avocados. And so are we just, just blending avocados in here? That we are essentially just blending avocados. Okay. Now, some people will add sour cream to add some yeah. flavor and consistency, which is a good addition. I suggest doing that. But I didn't really I didn't really want to do that today. I, I like it, but I think it tastes almost the same. Okay. Um, so you're going to be adding any other liquid or anything like that we will. in there? More lemon juice. Because More lemon juice, okay. We want, we want to be able to turn that avocado inside of there, right? And that, mm -hmm. that liquid in there helps with that, right? Yes, it does. I think that's why they put orange juice in like every smoothie, right? That you get at some shop. Yeah, because you have to have some liquid but you also have to, to pull it all thicker. down. Yeah. yeah. But you also have to have that. And the sugar comes in. You know, yeah. it's smoothies the healthy smoothies right then some parts really need that sugar content <laughs> yeah, some parts it's there. Not good for you. i'm telling you it's no don't worry about how much sugar i put in don't even look in the back it's fine anyway all right oh, okay so put the lid on there now should we add any salt and pepper while we're blending or do you want to wait till the end okay. there? it doesn't really matter what stage you put it in as long as it is incorporated in okay so yeah especially with this because you're just kind of blending it in just it's not ser it's not serving a function in the cooking, you know. Because like we talk about yeah, adding salt and pepper or something like that. It's very good. There, just a right. just a smidge there. Okay. There we go. All right. So we've got uh, we've got our avocado crema here, nice and seasoned. We have our Texas caviar here, mixed up, nice and seasoned. That looks great. Uh, bright avocado there. We've got some uh, wonderful chunks of parsley or some nice chopped up parsley in there so how are we going to finish this now all right well we are going to play it now you can make your own crackers if you are you know have the adventure side but i don't have a stand mixer anymore so i don't bake really mm -hmm. all that often i do have a really good uh sourdough discard cracker recipe Ooh, really? we need okay. to do a discard session yeah you you uh uh told me about the uh Pan fried starter, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. man, I did that. That is so good. Okay, so we put down a base of avocado crema there. Yes. Right? I'm going to put one on both so I can, we can show that. So I just bought these at the commissary. Um, they're just some basic, like, table crackers that are actually just pretty all right. I actually prefer the rosemary ones, but the salt and pepper ones work, too. Mm -hmm. Now, another spoon. I use so many things. So. All right, we got another spoon for you. And then we put that on the base because I kind of want to serve it as hors d'oeuvres and whatnot, but either there way. There you go. All right. And you want to try and get just a little bit of everything. So if you can see, we got a little bit of jalapeno, parsley, cilantro, some of the peppers, some corn and beans. You need to scrape yeah, it off there. You want to plate it. Kind of good, mate. And then wipe off the rest. Don't feel bad if that happens. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. That looks delicious. Yeah. That's good. Good. A very... Yeah. 
I don't know how those hibachi gorillas do anything with all the leaf ends of them. Oh, the, the flipping. <laughs> yeah, the flipping <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Welcome back, Sharon. Thank you. So they look they, amazing. They do look Thank really, good, really, really I great. They come out of the oven too. Yeah. I mean, even over that that powerful vinegar, we can still I can still smell that. So it smells great. Uh, we have some wonderful butter or um, your your frosting here. Yeah. Wait, you, you got some color in there. Yeah, you've added some yeah. color to it. Ah, all nice. right. So. How about you finish these up? I want to point out, you can see the bubbles in here. When we were talking about the mechanical um, leavening, um, you can see like, it, it rose up quite a bit right up to the top, and it, it looks great. Thank you. It's very good. Yeah. Yes. All right. Can't wait to try these. So excited. This is the glory of silicone pan. Oh, look at that. You just pop them right out. Look at that. Come out nice and whole. We don't, they're not sticking in there. Fantastic. I know. I, I gotta get rid of my muffin tins there. I, I feel like everything everything sticks in those. I know. No what, they do, yeah. Unless you use papers and I don't like doing that. I don't like using paper though. I think paper just it just it doesn't look great. I mean it gives the you know, it gives that nice rib effect there on the, the outside. Flute. You know? Yeah, the flute. Thank you. The flute. The flute. <laughs> okay. So All right. What I have here is I've just plated three of the small ones in the front and then one of the bigger ones in the back. Oh, right. And then I'm going to put one of these smaller ones on top of the big one just so it yeah. has some height in the plating. Nice. Okay. I like your thought process like, here. Yeah, definitely. But everybody likes <laughs> Not everybody. Most people. <laughs> Oh, nice. I like how you put the two different colors in there separately. So now yeah, you're getting that. Little it marble. Nice marble. It's beautiful. Look in there. That's great. Nice. You get the height, you get the texture. This is beautiful. This is very nice. Great piping skills. Yep. With that nice little flick of the wrist right there. Mm -hmm. Do you have all the uh, piping techniques down with the, the S shape and the. I don't think so. Where no. no. you got a pipe and I forget what it's called, but like you pipe and push back. No, I don't, yeah, I'm not. I don't, I don't know all the names of all of them. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, you're doing a little crumble. See, and I like that your garnish that you're about to do here is a part of the dish. Part of, yeah comes from one of the baked goods there. Okay. It's like when you go to a restaurant and you have paprika on your plate. Mm -hmm. Why? <laughs> where, where, where is it? Yeah. Where... You just want to add some color? All right. Well, also goes through and uses some extra of like, if there's one that didn't rise as much as you'd hoped. Oh, nice. So it's oh, a good okay. way to use up all of them. You can use the dead one. Huh? All right. <laughs> oh, are those white chocolate covertures? Yeah. Oh, very Those good. are my favorite. I mean, Jason has to hide them for me. I do. And our ruby chocolate, too. I have to hide that. But that was not me. I, do, I do love that stuff. So I don't know where that stuff went. That's not you. Huh? Okay. All and right. Go and have your very good. Beautiful. Oh, man. That looks great. I can't wait to try one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have our two bean products here. Right? We have a savory and we have a sweet. Now we're going to try these things. I am so excited to taste these. Cannot wait. Jimmy? Oh, I'm super excited. Very, very excited. Can't wait. I really want to go in for the brownie first, but I know we should probably go savory then sweet. Yeah, well, it's kind of traditional. You guys do you. I'm going for a brownie. I've had this. All right. All right. Here we go. <laughs> well, I'm, going I'm going for the rosemary cracker. cracker. Uh, I'm yeah. going for just, I want to taste just the, uh, just this the caviar there. I want to take this cute little one. God, look at mm -hmm. that eyes. Mm -hmm. Man, I really like that. A big pop of citrus in there, actually. Yeah, yeah. I really like that. I can taste the jalapeno in there. The avocado is a nice oh, base, yeah. right? It's like and it helps kind of smooth everything. Yeah. Base, yeah. yeah. And then, but the, I think maybe it's because of the size of the bite. The icing almost sort of took it over, but it's still really good. I wasn't. I was expecting like Man, a good chocolate flavor to like overpower mm. the beans, so you didn't taste it. But I still taste it, and it's not bad, right? Mm -hmm. It's in there, and I don't like hate it. <laughs> I think that was a compliment. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was, I'm sorry, I'm very bad at those. But you did really well, and they taste delicious, is what Thank I'm you. saying. Oh, yeah. So I think we're good. All right. I'm I think we, your point is, like, you know that there's bean in there, and you can kind of taste it, but it's such a unique flavor on it. Mm. And adding that chocolate. Wow. Like it, that is incredible. That is really, really good. And that yeah. is made really Yeah, good. that's amazing. I, I don't usually like icing, but I could actually eat more of those. <laughs> Mm. I like elevates the texture of a brownie yeah. as well. Yeah. You know? It's a. Uh... Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. Nicely it's done good. on those. Nicely done on the both of caviar. You. Amazing job. Yeah. Both You're doing amazing work in ProSart. Mm-hmm. You know, and thank you for coming out and joining us. Yeah. Um, it was fun. <laughs> yeah. We, we love having. Thank you. We love working with you all. Definitely. And Paula and Carrie over here. You know, we love having. Our, this relationship with ProStart, you know, and we're, we're happy to continue it. So. I mean, thank you guys again for this whole experience. Yeah. I, I think this isn't exactly what I submitted. You'll have to invite me back again, please, so that I can make it and do it better. <laughs> well, when you come to school here, you'll yeah, have to make come, it Yeah, that's it. That's it. When you come to school here, you can do that. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Sharon, Aiden, thank you so much for coming thank down. Thank you for having me. And you're absolutely welcome. And with that... Thank you all very much. Stay safe. Stay rowdy. Bye, y'all.